Hello! Welcome. Take a seat. Have a cup of tea. That's actually not bad. Yeah, I've actually got tea today, amazingly. Yeah, it took this long for me to do that intro and actually have a cup of tea, so well done me. But thank you for joining me this wonderful, wonderful Halloween night. Now, I'm sure you were all expecting me to do a Halloween video and I wasn't, I wasn't really sure about doing one initially, but I thought, hey, why not? I love Halloween, I love scary stuff, and it gave me a good opportunity to show you the lovely artwork around my room. Now, if I'm feeling, if I'm seeming a bit nervous at all, it is not because of my lovely yin yang mask that I definitely didn't buy from a thrift shop and is almost definitely haunted. I'm a bit creeped out because of what's over there. I seriously find that doll so creepy. If you don't know what it is, it's a Disney's Elsa doll. Um, I don't really know all the details, it's the Baroness's, but bloody hell does that thing creep me out. Oh. So, why are we here? Well, Halloween is of course a time for scary and horrific details of the likes of which that mankind should not know but all too much enjoys. And because of that, I thought we'd go into something that the human species has been doing for a very long time and seems to excel at greater than any other species than any than any that has ever come before or will ever come again. And that is torture and uh, capital punishment. Namely, where those two cross over, where a device designed for torture, for extracting information through pain, has then been repurposed to create a device for uh, murder and execution. And I thought I'd do a top five, because I like top fives. Top tens go on too long, top sevens are just a bit too weird, and top elevens are just a little pretentious. So, top five it is. So, let's go through my five. And this is just my opinion on my top five worst ways that humans have ever come up with to torture and kill each other. And I do have reasons why they're in this order. So, number five to start this Halloween night is the Cavato Squachiapala. I might have butchered that because I'm Italian, not Spanish. But the other name for it is the Chevalet or you may know it as the Wooden Horse. Now, the Wooden Horse was a device created for the Spanish Inquisition. It may predate that. I couldn't find much in my research about it, just knowing that apparently around the same time in Spain, Italy and France, they decided to create a triangular piece of wood with a sharp top and lower people onto it with cannonballs or small children clinging onto their legs to pull them down and eventually kill them through their own body weight. Now that does sound horrific, and for those of you under the age of 18, please close your ears for a moment because this is the reason why it is number 5 and not higher, because that device has gone from being a torture device to a sex toy. It's used in S&M communities, and my opinion is if something designed for pain can now give pleasure, it loses points. Moving on. Number four, keel hauling. Now this isn't exactly a device, but this is a method. And if you don't know what keel hauling is, go listen to the Elstorm song, Keel Haul. It's great. But what it actually is, it is where Dutch pirates and navymen would take a crewmate who has committed a crime, usually theft, uh, from another crewman while they're at high sea, and they would tie him to a anchoring point that is below the keel, which is the back of the ship, almost like the rudder, and he would be hauled, there you go, keel haul, from one side of the ship to the other under the boat, and dragged behind the boat. Now, if that sounds absolutely awful, that's because it is, and the reason it's so awful is quite simple. Drowning is the least of your concerns in that situation. What you've really got to worry about in that one isn't drowning or death, it's the people that live. Because they will have seen some shit and gone through some shit. And 
more so than that, the bottoms of those kind of ships back in that era would have been covered in barnacles, and as such, if they did live, they would be covered in lacerations from the razor-sharp backs of the barnacles on the bottom of the ship. And, even again, drowning isn't your worst situation, blood in water summons sharks. Now, I don't know if there are any shark deaths through this, but I may write some into one of my stories one day, because that seems all too perfect. Number three. Now we're getting into my top three, and these are the ones I would take really seriously. These are the ones that I do consider my tops. These never really change. Number three, the breaking wheel. Now, anyone who's played Bloodborne knows about Lagarius's wheel and the origins of such an object. If you haven't, go play it. It's a great game if you can eventually get to the Lagarius wheel. But the breaking wheel. It was basically a cartwheel that where a criminal's um, legs would be put between, and their arms would be put between the spokes, and an iron cudgel or a club would be used to break the bones and then would beat them to death. It was an act of humiliation and execution, usually reserved for acts of patricide, matricide, regicide, or heathens. Many of these torture devices have been used on heathens or heretics. I may do a whole video about why I, of what a heathen or a heretic is, but it should be fairly self-explanatory through religious crime. Now, if you had that one, you were lucky! Because what they'd also do with the breaking wheel was they would tie someone to the floor and beat them to death with the actual wheel. This was a device of absolute humiliation and degradation for the victim. And, like the next on this list, incredibly, is German. In fact, Nuremberg. They were some messed up people in Nuremberg back in the medieval period. So the next on this list, also from Nuremberg, Germany in the medieval period, you all know it as the Iron Maiden. Now, what is an Iron Maiden? I probably don't need to go into too much detail, but basically it is a metal cabinet, sometimes done up to look like a woman's face on the front, that would open up to reveal a cage where you could see the face of the victim, and inside the cabinet would be long iron spikes, razor sharp and very rarely cleaned. Now, what was the point of this? Because just a spiked cabinet, that's scary, claustrophobic, but that's not really... Deadly, you might think. Now, suddenly you start to realise that what they did was they'd put someone in there for days on end without water, food or sleep, and they'd bang on it to make sure they were awake. And if it was going on a bit too long, they'd pump rats in there, hungry rats that would eat their toes. And suddenly you've got someone who's meant to be staying stock still so they don't get hurt, to them clambering around and falling and sleeping and fainting and Falling forward, never touch. They are going to be covered in cuts and scrapes and lacerations, and they will they would die from illness and disease before they die from the iron spikes. So, what is my number one? What is the number one on this list for devices created to torture and kill hapless victims? Did she move? Wait, rewatching that video just in case. I'm pretty sure those eyes moved. She creeps me out. <laughs> number one. Scavenger's Daughter or Skevington's Daughter. Now, if you don't know what this is, it is good that you don't know what it is. It was only particularly used during the reign of Henry VIII by his head torturer, Lord Skevington, also nicknamed Scavenger. And the story goes that they had a man come in who was convicted of murder or theft or whatever they wanted to try him for, and he was to be executed on the rack. Now, the man was incredibly tall, much taller than the rat could take, and he was just giggling, it, it, it was doing nothing. So, rather than scavenger Skevington thinking, why are we doing this? Should we do is this the right thing to do? He goes, how can I make this work? And what he creates is metal bands, similar to, how, similar to a bow in, con in construction, and they would be curved at the top, and they would be pulled like that. Basically, the idea was a reverse rack. It was designed where you put the person inside in a very cramped space and you pulled and eventually you caused the entire rib cage to curl inwards. You would break the spine, break the ribs, break the shoulders, 
before the person finally dies of internal hemorrhaging, internal bleeding. So truly a lovely device. Now, I hope you enjoy your Halloween. Stay safe. Uh, if you're going trick-or-treating, make sure you've got family and friends around. And I hope you just have a wonderful night. Thank you very much. Now get out of my house. Bye. Remember to like and subscribe for future videos. And if you're interested, follow the link in the description below to the Facebook page where there are regular updates and even the Patreon. Bye.